All right, we are back with another 90s tech video. And uh, this is one I've been wanting to do for a while. I think I say that with all of my videos, but I've had the CPU for a while now. And uh, uh, what I wanted to do is you should see some B-roll of my reverse sleeper uh, Windows XP build. Um, currently it consists of a Pentium D 925 at three gigahertz. I think I paid $6 for it. Uh, it's got an AGP ATI Radeon 4670 two gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte and 400 gigabyte SATA hard drive, a Sound Blaster Autogy PCI. The CPU is, cooler is a Arctic Freezer 7 Pro, a little mini tower cooler. Uh, the case is a Fractal Focus G Mini with the white LEDs up front. And then I have a white uh, diffused LED ring uh, by Ego uh, in the back for exhaust. And then it's got a DVD-ROM uh, uh, on IDE. And um, the reason why I wanted to do this upgrade is because I want to take it from the Pentium D, which is apparently considered one of Intel's worst CPUs, especially of that generation, to something slightly more modern. But the RAM, the bus, everything runs at 800 megahertz. So I wanted to try and find the fastest 800 megahertz um, front side bus CPU that I could to ensure compatibility. The motherboard that I have, which I can't remember the name of, I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. I bought new about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, uh, even though it was a Pentium 4 socket motherboard. And that's by, oh, who makes that one? Um, I will also put that down there. It'll be in the, it'll be on the bottom of the screen. Anyway, um, so I wanted to go Core Duo or Core 2 Duo and I managed to find an E4600 Core 2 Duo at 2.4 gigahertz. And doing some reading, apparently even though it runs at a lower clock speed, it's substantially faster than the Pentium D. Um, there is a great video. If you do a YouTube search for uh, Budget Builds Official, that's the name of the YouTube channel. Great guy, never met him, but he makes really great videos. If you haven't seen his stuff, definitely go check it out. Um, and he did one called Intel's Pentium Disaster. And the D has like quotes around it. So anyway, watch his video, very good history on uh, this CPU and kind of how it got made and that sort of thing. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we are gonna do some benchmarks and we are going to upgrade the CPU and then benchmark it again and see if it makes any difference. The, I think the big bottleneck here in this build really is the AGP slot. Um, when I built this, I was like, yeah, I wanna go AGP for my XP build because that's like legit. And <laughs> little did I realize at the time that AGP video cards, especially fast ones, are really expensive. I think I paid over $150 for my Radeon 4670. So, you, you know, it's a hobby and sometimes hobbies just don't make financial sense. <laughs> but it is a hobby. So anyway, we got it all set up here on the retro desk. So I'm gonna get the video capture started and we're gonna move over to that. I think I'll just go ahead and run it full screen and do a voiceover. We will go from there. So we'll do that. Here we are with the video capture running, getting nice and cozy. This is my Windows XP LAN computer. Uh, I host Windows XP LAN parties now and then, although probably won't be able to for like a year, um, thanks to the lovely and awful pandemic that we have going on right now. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and run 3D Mark. If I can remember where it is. There it is. We're gonna go ahead and run 3D Mark 05. In case you don't know it, by the way, uh, do a little bit of YouTube searching. You can download 3D Mark, uh, all the old versions, uh, complete with pro keys directly from uh, the 3D Mark website. Really, really cool. Um, really glad that they offer that for us um, vintage computer nerds. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and run the, the basic test. Actually, I'm curious what other CPU tests there are. All right, so these feature tests are mostly for um, video card specific things. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave those off. The things we're really interested in are the synthetic game tests and the CPU tests. So let's see how this goes. And we'll speed through this at like a million X.
Okay, and here we are. We have a score of 8288. Let's take a look at the details. Okay, so looks like uh, Return to Proxicon is 30.8, Firefly Forest 22.8, Canyon Flight 51.8, and then our CPU score is 4681. And uh, CPU test one was 2.5 frames a second on average, and CPU test two was 3.8. Um, everything else we skipped for speed. So, really cool. Let's uh, power this baby off. Let's upgrade the CPU and run these tests again and see what we get. Okay, on the bench, let's get this upgrade party started. I've already loosened the thumb screws. Okay, how does this go on? Looks like I need to remove the fan. It's not hooked on there terribly well. We're gonna go back and forth. Since this had a little bit of use, you can just kind of rock it back and forth. Now, I like to use the spread method where I spread it around on the IHS. I was hoping I wouldn't have to take the uh, frame off, but oh well. And there's our CPU. E4600, pretty cool. So just going over this with some 91% isopropyl. I never liked how tight these sockets are. Is that me or is there thermal compound on some of the resistors? Yes, there was. Great. Pick you up. Drop you down, bam, and not that one. Still got some IPA here. Let's get this baby nice and clean. Love this cooler. It's inexpensive. It's got a great fan. It's totally overkill for this build. The, the 500 watt EVGA here is also completely overkill for this build. But I wanted it to be overkill because I plan on keeping this computer for a long time. Um, and that's why I was so excited to build it. Uh, when it comes to CPUs especially, I'm a bit of an AMD fanboy. And I would have loved to build this as an AMD system. But because I was able to get the motherboard brand new and build an XP rig around a brand new motherboard. Um, and the RAM is also new actually. But... Um, I just decided, okay, I'm gonna build this thing, I'm gonna turn it into kind of this reverse sleeper uh, in this fractal case, really make it look modern. So if, you know, if you're like 20 feet away and you look at that computer, you're gonna be like, oh, that's an interesting you know, little you know, gaming PC. And then you kind of get a little closer and you're like, what is that weird video card? <laughs> what is, whoa, hard drives? Like, what is going on in there? So, <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of for the lulls, for the fun. I was enjoying it. All right, so we got our MX4. I actually just used this yesterday to upgrade my main gaming rig from a 1700, uh, Ryzen 7 1700 to a Ryzen 7 3800X. So we're just gonna grab a little bit here. And I like to spread it out like this. So when I do these, I like to do them crosswise. Yeah, I've been a big fan of Arctic for many, many years. They've been around for a really long time. Yeah, they make great fans. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. Just a long time customer going way back to the day. Looks like I was a lot further back on this rear screw. Oh, there it goes, it just stopped, okay. All right, so those are snug. So I like to tuck the cable down underneath the heatsink, and she just snaps right back on. Okay, I'm just going to leave this zoomed out a bit. Uh, no capture here. Um, this is just going to be a real quick test just to make sure it works, and then if it does, shut it back down, put it back on the bench, and uh, put capture back on. All right. Power switch on.
I hear the CPU fan ramping up and down. Okay, and it just shut off. Oh, but it's turning back on. Oh, yes. Yes, Core 2 Duo E4600 at 2.4 gigahertz. Wow, it doesn't even care. It's just gonna boot right into Windows. Nice. Fan flippin' tastic. All right, let's, uh, let's go back to the bench, uh, get back all uh, warm and cozy on the video capture, and let's run these benchmarks again, shall we? Let's just get right to business, shall we? 3D Mark 2005. I'm not really sure what to expect. I, I feel like the CPU benchmark should be a lot better. Uh, that of course is going to be a single core, as far as I'm aware, that's going to be a single core benchmark. But uh, I don't know if this will really affect uh, the synthetic game benchmark that much. It may. But we're going to find out. That's why we're doing this. We're doing this for science. Look at that, Intel Core 2 Duo CPU E4600, 64-bit CPU. <laughs> I think we're good, let's do this. Okay, benchmarks are over and wow, look at that score. That is amazing. I imagine a lot of that is probably the CPU benchmark because it did look like it was running way faster. I would say over 100% faster, right? Going from one to two frames per second. <laughs> um, but uh, that's just the way it measures it, right? So like, what if we were at like almost two frames a second, but it was showing one, and then now we were at just above two frames a second, but it was showing two. So it may not be exactly a 100% improvement score, but let's take a look at the details here. So yeah, much higher. Yeah, because I remember this one, uh, this was more around 30 frames a second. All right, well, I just uh, tried to open the 3DR file, and it, I can't seem to find a way to open it. Uh, if there's a way to open it, please go ahead and put it in the comments. Although, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and uh, take some screenshots from the video that I recorded, and uh, we can put these up right next to each other side by side. But I am definitely seeing a big improvement um, in both CPU and GPU performance uh, with the new CPU. So. Uh, I would say this upgrade is a raging success. Um, I paid $6 for this E4600 Core 2 Duo. 
Um, there was an E4700 Core 2 Duo, which is a teeny, teeny bit faster on eBay, but it was like $30. And I'm like, nah, nah, I don't need to pay an extra, uh, you know, 20 some odd dollars in order to get a teeny bit more performance when the bottleneck is still probably the AGP slot. But um, the fact that we were able to get uh, a bit more of an uplift uh, in graphics performance and of course uh, quite a bit of an uplift in CPU um, even at a lower clock speed just goes to show how big of an improvement it was going from the Pentium 4 architecture to the Core 2 Duo architecture sorry I can't remember the the code names but um, hopefully uh, yeah this will be helpful to other folks out there who want to upgrade their XP rig if they have a similar setup to me Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do have an XP rig, uh, I'd love to hear your stats. Um, and if you go to XP lands or something like that, please put it down in the comments. Uh, what is your XP rig uh, if you have one? I'd love to hear it. Uh, take care out there and keep it 90s, my friends.